What's up guys, Kevin Cage here with another XRP update. Hope you're all doing great today and I would like to go on record and say that I do believe it is entirely possible for the Spark Token FLR Flare to be valued at $10 at some point with a market capitalization at the very least of $1 trillion. So in this video, I'm going to show you why and the network is not even live yet. So I'm very, very excited. And of course, it has an implied valuation even using the low estimate or the IOUs on Poloniex alone, roughly at 44 cents, 45 cents, that would show, because obviously it's 100 billion assets minted, just like the XRP ledger, that the market cap is still fully implied. The network is not live quite yet until, what, next month or so. But that would basically say that this is already in line with a Cardano type of market capitalization. That is absolutely insane. You should not be surprised one bit since we will be minting F assets and unlocking liquidity between a variety of ecosystems such as Doge. And I know it seems silly, but Doge's market cap alone is almost 75 billion dollars. So a little more than 10X from there, they get it. Um, that's just crazy to think that a network at launch can have an asset with such strong tokenomics, token economics, that we could be reaching those levels. Now, remember, just so you guys know, um, the first 15% of Spark will actually be distributed to us essentially right away, and the rest will be distributed over the 25-month to 34-month period. So they're doing this to essentially try to incentivize network participation and strength in this ecosystem. So this is on the blog off Flare's website, and for any newcomers, let me see where I put it, right here. So I was saying this, this was not even hypey. I think people think I was joking here. I'm dead serious. Flare will have a market cap of $1 trillion at some point. Change my mind, $10 plus. Now this is not financial advice. And I did put that Flare blog right below for anybody curious. And I retweeted this one because I just wanted to say, this is not live yet. If you own any IOUs on Bitru or Poloniex, those are not the actual tokens. You are trusting the exchange at your own risk. I'm personally holding this asset for the long term and I will be awaiting distribution. So I just wanted to point that out. Um, kind of curious what the comments are saying down below. But uh, nonetheless, so let's start off with this. So first off, Flare Networks actually retweeted this and it's showing an implied valuation of $44 billion for the market cap. So it's not just me saying it, this is Flare Networks themselves. Notice, people will be able to earn Flare, or Spark I should say, by minting Doge, Litecoin, XLM, XRP, and any other integrated tokens onto Flare as F assets, unlocking value, and instead of DeFi, they say DogeFi. And this gentleman right here, which is really cool, just kind of pointing out, for those that keep track of Flare Networks, the IOU is trading on Poloniex at an all-time high of approximately almost 45 cents per token. We can check right here and even see, currently at an all-time high, almost 45 cents, let's just say 44 cents. That is crazy. And also keep in mind, even on live coin watch, you can see this uh, other IOU for Spark is on Bitru. So this is roughly $2. So do you want to take the average between the 44 cents and the $2? You could, but let's just play really conservative and assume that the you know valuation when going live would be somewhere around the lower end of the spectrum just to be safe and either way that is absolutely insane because this implies a market capitalization of 44 billion dollars yes limited val uh, volume i'm happy that he said this venues etc but still so whether we launch at one cent, 50 cents, two dollars, I do fully believe that it is possible for Flare, the Spark token, to be valued at ten dollars. It's the same type of supply as XRP. Now, a total supply. So I'm curious what the circulating supply will be initially, but nonetheless, I am very, very excited for what this means for all of the cryptocurrency space. And even over here, guys, I mean, come on, Bitcoin's at a $1 trillion asset. It's just a matter of time before Ethereum reaches a $1 trillion market cap as well. Same thing goes for XRP and a variety of other assets that successfully go live and do their job in this new economy. So just wanted to point that out, and I am beyond excited. Okay, so have this if you guys want to read the flare blog i did put it under my tweets now i wanted to talk about this task force to tell washington ramp up crypto exchange regulation now pay close attention to this let me get a sip of coffee really quick got to go meet my cpa right after this really quick so overall guys i don't know if you've noticed but uh the kyc the know your customer and all that is getting very very heavy on personal exchanges i personally prefer an otc broker like caleb and brown links are in the video description but even on certain exchanges like binance us they're asking me to fill out forms and i'm sure they're asking you too i'm getting your net worth getting your net worth in crypto getting you know all type of KYC information, which I understand, but you know, how much information do we really have to share? It's uh it's you know kind of annoying. I'm sure you guys are dealing with dealing it with it 
are dealing with this with a variety of other exchanges, but that's just one that I've personally noticed. Um, and right here, the news agency pointed out that ideas like these have been put out before policymakers before with the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network. So FinCEN, remember them in the DOJ Department of Justice actually called XRP a virtual currency in 2015 aka not a security, but notice they're asking Washington to, to create a system of disclosure rules for crypto transactions worth over $10,000. So, you know, any type of simple transaction in crypto when assets are going up 10x, I think this is really common now during the bull run. Um, yeah, so, you know, just be weary of that, guys. Um, <laughs> you know, we, we act like we have privacy, but we will see with this cryptocurrency market. Okay. By Bank XRP, guys, we have Bitstamp expanding in the U.S. Now, I wanted to point them out as well, which is cool, because remember, in yesterday's video, they pointed out that they're looking to add Flare the Spark token. So I cannot wait. I'm curious where the price will reach equilibrium, whether it's lower or higher. I will be considering to actually buy some, maybe in bulk, as a long-term hold. Now, that is not financial advice. I am, you know, invested in this network. I'm excited. I own XRP and a variety of other integrated assets. So I am wishing them much success. So just wanted to point that out. All right. So Bitstamp, you know, announcing their expansion in the U.S. market. All good to see that. All kinds of, you know, three-figure growth. Um, no surprise. And we can see right here, their CEO, crypto is the fastest growing segment of financial services, and we intend to be a leader in the most competitive financial market in the world, the U.S. The potential upside for new retail and institutional investors in the U.S. is astronomical and as one of the top three global exchanges, we are seeing incredible customer adoption. The triple-digit growth we've seen in the U.S. in 2021 has shown us that Americans want access to an exchange like ours. All right. Next, XRP Crypto Wolf just sharing this recent thing on Decrypt via Visa or from Visa. I almost said Visa V. Uh, Visa outlines five ways to pushing into crypto it, that it's pushing into crypto. One, helping you buy cryptocurrencies. Two, helping you spend them, so giving you a variety of options, maybe merchants and gateways too. Three, crypto and everyday finance, we're seeing that. Four, settlements of crypto, settlements, aka XRP. And five, central bank digital currencies, whether that is retail or wholesale. Good to see. Okay, now, whether you love them or hate them, we have Michael Novogratz, billionaire. We can see that his firm, Galaxy Digital Holdings, scores a $1.2 billion acquisition for BitGo. And I'm sure you guys have heard of BitGo. We've talked about them many, many times. Actually, let me just look this up. Just so you, I mean, be patient with me, but let's see. BitGo, Ripple, XRP, Wallet. Just to give you a little perspective. This is just off memory. Um, Let's go right here. Right here, BitGo builds an enterprise wallet for XRP back in 2017. Now, we know a lot of custodians like Curve and all these other ecosystems. We know Nexo's involvement. You can go through a bunch of CeFi platforms, centralized finance, whether it's BlockFi, Nexo, etc., and you're going to see BitGo's involvement as well. So no surprise there. Now, next up, we have some big news, guys, shared by XRP Stort. So Ripple appoints former treasurer of the United States, Rosie Rios, as board of directors. Notice, Ripple is one of the best examples of how to use cryptocurrency in a legitimate role to facilitate payments globally blockchain and crypto will underpin our future global financial system it is so funny that people don't see what's right in front of them look at the caliber of people on the board of directors so we have rosie and she you can see right here she served as the 40 43rd treasurer of the u.s of the u.s and was the ceo of the bureau of engraving and printing in the u.s mint including fort knox you cannot make this stuff up Sorry if I sound stuffy. I'm still waking up and I got to run after this video. But I mean, Chris Larson, Susan Athey, don't even get me started on her um, at even the participants list of Bilderberg, Brad Garlinghouse. I'll have to read more about her, but we got Adam Trademan, Craig Phillips. Please read about this gentleman. I think you guys will be very impressed. And also Sandy O'Connor. Same thing goes. 30 years of experience. You guys know her relationship with, of course, JP Morgan. Um, you cannot make this stuff up. So the caliber of people that are backing Ripple, don't even get me started on their lawyers, is very strong. And I am rooting for them to come out of this on top with X XRP regulatory clarity. Okay, let me see if there's anything else. And last but not least, just for some fun, guys, I know we can all relate to this tweet. Um, when you're holding an asset while you watch another asset do a 2x, it doubles. And then you finally want to chase and go after that asset. Everybody says it's going up. Your grandma's talking about it. You finally swap and, you know, sell your asset for that one. And then, you you know, as you impatiently do that, shortly after your old bag or your current bag that you just swapped goes down. Now, now it's taking a pullback, whereas the asset that you just sold pumps and ends up doing a 2x. This is what happens. This is the definition of FOMO, F-O-M-O. 
FOMO, fear of missing out in this market, guys. Um, we've all had it. We all experience it from time to time. But uh, sometimes holding, frankly, can make you the most money in the space. So try to sleep on it. Um, you know, even when assets do pump and you want to chase the pump, odds are that you are not going to be buying the bottom. So does it really hurt to maybe setting a limit buy that's a little lower just in case it does wick down the next day or next week? No, I think that's pretty smart. So once again, not financial advice, guys. I'm excited to see how Flare launches, of course, hopefully sometime in June, and we're going to see where these prices reach equilibrium, and I'm awaiting other exchanges. If there's any other exchanges that have the Flare IOU that are listed right now, let me know. All I know of for now is Poloniex as well as Bitru. So keep that in mind, guys, and remember the blog is right under here. So right there for anybody that is curious. Further information on the Spark token distribution. Thanks so much, and I will catch you in the next video.